sir time is uh, 11:54 should we start right now yes we can start it now my voice is audible now madam yes sir your voice is audible okay thank you sir यूनिवर्सिटी Sir has pursued his PhD in food technology at PPR University, State Government University, which is NAC accredited in Salem, Tamil Nadu. Sir has strong background in the field of food science, food processing, food proteomics, and food technology. Previously, sir has worked as principal at College of Food Technology, Saralgaon, Maharashtra, from 2016 to 2019. Sir has guided. B Tech as well as MSc student in food science and technology, student in experimental learning project and new product development etc. Then in research he has more than twenty national and international publications, three books and one book chapter. Sir has presented more than twenty five articles in national and international conferences. He given invited talk to school and colleges regarding midday meal program in Tamil Nadu region. Sir has got the best principal award in 2020 by INSC Bangalore. Sir has received Young Scientist Award in 2021 by Be Good Factory at Goa. So and now I will like to request to sir so we can start the session. And thank you. Thank you. brief introduction on me and good morning one and all and first of all i want to thank for paul university and the department of food technology d hod coordinator for inviting me as a invited talk on the world food day 2021 yeah. is my slides are visible no sir yes sir yes sir now it is visible and today's topic on the bulk food day importance of food safety during food processing sir can you zoom your slide when when i am zooming it is not forwarding for another slides madam that's for okay okay fine yeah. sir and we know all of you what is food by the basic knowledge food is nothing but it can be taken by the human being animals and for it is it is going to help in the help for us to live in a alive condition and allow to grow and develop with this food only and for this food there is a some safety measures has to be there for that one and that is called as a food safety and the safety measure what is that means the food what is produced that has to be safe for the consumption according to the fssai guidelines the definition of food security food safety may be they, they given, given as the assurance that food is acceptable for human consumption means uh, that it has to be without any side effects that it has to be acceptable for the human consumption according to intended to use and uh, the we know there is a lot of protocol procedures are there from farm to cook means uh, their handling techniques are there and preparation of food materials storage of food and then there is a lot of procedures are there and that one it has to, in the all the procedures 
maintained in a safety manner. And these procedures, handling, preparation, storage of foods, and it, this, these all going to help for for the prevention means uh, it uh, for the food safety purpose and it to prevent the foodborne illness. And let us discuss about the food manufacturing process. What the uh, how it is going to be achieved, and for this process, food manufacturing process, the the food safety. The safe design of the process should be there. Means uh, they had to, has to be followed and monitored with a safe design, and they have to develop a recipe in a proto with a some procedure and protocol, and the packaging materials also they have to develop in recipe and packaging format, and the and the industry food industry they have to follow good manufact manufacturing practice GMP. This is nothing. This is nothing but and to control the. Manufacturing environment inside the food industry, and another third one is the HACCP principle. It is also useful for the food industry to maintain the food safety management. And the safer food can be obtained. How can you obtain the safer food means to clean environment. We have to keep a clean environment. Then. We have to segregate raw materials, raw food materials, and the cooked food materials, and cook thoroughly. Then keep food at a safer temperature. And mostly, we are going nowadays. We are using refrigerators, huh? fridges. Why we are using to maintain the food items, vegetables or food items in a safer temperature means appropriate temperature. We have to maintain that one and use safe water and also raw materials. And by this, we can obtain safer food. And what are, what are the hazards? It is nothing. What is not hazard is nothing but it is a toxicity of a to, toxicity as a capacity of a substance to harm or injury of any kind under any conditions. Means it may a lethal dose is there. Means till that if it is there, if any contamination happens or anything happens, then it is leads to the hazardness. And it may the hazard may be. What it will do? It will do. It is harmful, or it may cause injury to people. So it may hazard may come from the physical hazards, or chemical hazards, or biological hazards. And it is it by this we can is causing the harmful adverse effect on health of the consumer. And we can see the types of hazards. I told you just now: physical hazards, chemical hazards, and biological hazards. Let us discuss about the physical hazards. And the, when the food we are eating, that time sometimes uh, stones or heads, some jute fibers or something else comes. These are the physical, physically added, intentionally or in, unintentionally. Sometimes it may mix inside the food. And these these are the physical ones. Means uh, the stones, stems, seeds, hair, bone, fragments, feathers, nails, nuts, bolts, sometimes jewelries. Jute fibers, matchsticks. These are some physically it may present in, uh, unintentionally inside the food, and it may develop hazardness. And some, if you can see the chemical like uh, pesticides residu residues, food additives, excessive permissible food additives, cleaning chemicals, adulterants of and uh, veterinary residues. These are the some chemical hazards causing agents, and some biological hazards either by the microorganisms it may cause or the Or by the flies, it may cause insects, flies. Huh? You can see um, by the microorganisms, you can see bacteria, virus, yeast, protozoa, molds. They are going to cause food poisoning or foodborne pathogens. They are called. And sometimes the worms, flies, cockroaches, they also help in the food poisoning. By this, the hazards may develop. And what are what is the meant by contamination? any harmful foreign substance present in a food either by the uh, the harmful substance may come from the chemicals or by the micro organism activity dilutants before the processing or during the processing or after the processing stage at that time the uh, by these chemicals or micro organisms Contamination is the thing that the pathogens are transmitted from the 
ஒரு 
to the industry or any processing unit so that the purchased uh, vegetables or fruits they has to be in safer for the consumption and it can be accomplished with the legislation through effective management monitoring action and documentation good manufacturing practice is a part of quality assurance to ensure that manufactured processes take place in proactive step to ensure that product are safe means uh, good manufacturing nothing but uh, that the product what we are taking for the food industries that has to be safer means without any contamination that has to be there <coughs> excuse me and some of the principles of the good manufacturing practice like training has to be given for the personal hygiene maintenance purpose and organize, organization of personal building has to be maintained building and facilities has to be maintained in hygiene condition and equipment also has to be maintained in hygiene condition control of components production and process control packaging and label control storage distribution laboratory control documentation process cleaning and sanitation facilities they have to maintain inside the industry and sanitation process pest management to control the pest foreign metal control and waste management to remove the waste from the industry and reworking material audit reviews customer complaints procedures what they have taken for the customer complaints if any issue and what procedures they have followed and recall procedures they are all in under under the condition uh, under the good manufacturing practice these all this basic hygiene in the operating environment and some basic hygiene sanitary sanitary sanitization measures has to be taken cleaning and hygiene program has to be taken inside the food industry pest con control for the pest control pesticides has to be used for the pest con control and personal hygiene techniques they has to follow to maintain the good environment inside the industry and how we are going to follow personal hygiene facility the personal hygiene facility means advocate number of flush toilets has to be used inside the industry with effective sewage system and washing facilities there with the cold water and hot water soap has to be maintained in the washrooms and hygiene drying equipment has to be there and hygiene materials for the cleaning purpose materials has to be there and uh, chale, uh, changing facilities for the staff for the clothes changing and hygiene clothes they have to wear and hygienic facilities to be eating and drinking for the staff who are working inside the industry and the staff who are who are working and sometimes the people may visit for the industrial visit is there taking place that time also when they are visiting that uh, industry people they have to provide some gloves for the visitors and uh, also the workers also they have to follow hygiene procedure to ensure the safety of food processing and uh, sometimes uh, some staff may have some health issues contaminated disorders may happens when this uh, what happened the company they have to report to the industry persons and uh, the if you are suffering any carry, carrying with infectious disorders this is they have to diagnose properly afterwards diagnosis after diagnosing complete completing only they have to allow the staff has to allow for the working inside the industry till that the that the staff has to be given leaves and so if they have to must have not allowed for the enter the food handling and processing areas and some of the infectious disorder diseases condition should be reported to the staff or visitors to be responsible persons to monitor and record the by the company if the any person is suffering from the infectious disease disorders disease they has to be they should not allowed inside the industry if they allowed means what happened that disorder that with this disorder disease it may infect the food processing unit and sometimes injuries may happens cuts or skin abrasions 
may occurs and the proper dressing has to be done and catering gloves has to be used otherwise that uh, if they went with the injuries what happened the blood may enter inside the food processing units and it may spoil the procedures and personal hygiene like food handlers should be maintained in a high level of personal hygiene and when uh, the person staffs or workers when they are entering into the inside the food processing unit first they have to wash their hands properly after using the toilets also they have to wash hands after handling the raw materials also before and after handling contaminated materials also they frequently they have to wash their hands and control of personal habits that could result in a contamination of foods like they, the staffs those who are working inside the industry they should not split a sneeze coughing and chewing if if it is there means they have to report to the higher authorities if their health is not good and they should not split here and there inside the food industry food processing area and uh, when they are entering in the in, inside the work that they have to remove their personal things like jewelry and uh, all things because it may react with the food ingredients or it may leave, leave inside the physical hazards may develop with this one jewelry or watch sometimes pins also hair pins something else huh? they should remove in a one area and they have to go into inside the in the food industry area and the staff who are working inside the industry they have they have to maintain proper eating area drinking and smoking should be restricted for the some places itself and they should not eat inside the uh, processing area that eating section has to be kept for the other side and eating drink, drinking and smoking things hygienic clothes they have to wear proper hygienic clothes with and uh, they can wear hair gloves beard covering foot wears various type of gloves they have to use and waste management if proper container suitable waste storage areas has to be located inside the industry and the waste product what is gathered from the food industry they has to be stored and removed for the waste process because it has to be it, it should not be react with the that uh, um, foods what is there the process, processing foods that is it, it should not be react so this prevent the build up waste pest and reduce the risk of contamination of ingredients equipments and products and pest controls have to follow the pest management programs to control the pest inspection has to be done and time to time they have to control uh, they have to monitor the pest control and what day they did the pest control management and uh, from that uh, days again they have to one week in between one week or 15 days again they have to start pest control if any uh, and to the income and in how and we they have to check the incoming materials the in food industry persons raw materials ingredients packaging and container containers vehicles they have they have to check any pest is there or not and monitor detect report and document of the pest and uh, they have to monitor any um, pest pesticide pest are there or not if any detecting then they have to go for pest management programs and taking appropriate pest elimination measures and document activities as required by the pest practice and legislation prerequisite programs it is a nothing but the retained and implemented procedures that address operational condition and provide a documentation to help an operation run more smoothly to maintain and comprehensive food safety assurance program means they have they um, the person those who are maintaining the program inside they have to return returnly they have to make a documentation process and how means the documentation process is helpful in the following operations like raw material accept if good raw materials are there with uh, safer raw materials then only it has to be come inside the industry and the storage area where they are storing whether they are storing in appropriate temperature or not they have to check it that one and wash water quality what the what using for the processing what water is using whether it is hygienic water or not that has to be taken to, uh, choose that one and equipment maintained properly or not with the hygienic condition 
production control for the grading and washing cutting drying and packaging temperature and microbial control if any microbial growth are near, uh, there are not they have to check it and chemical control also and sanitary control for the facility equipment and employees they have to check the employee sanitation facility equipment sanitation facility as well as that areas surrounded by the food industry they have to check and product coding and traceability if anything happens if anything happen that time they can trace the product which is contaminated product if sometimes if any complaints received so they have to take back from the if any if it is reached to the marketing area in into the customer level if anything happen any any complaints received then the with the date date and the trace, trace they have to trace the product and they have to take back to the industry that the unsafe products otherwise it may damage to the image to the industry and the this is the flow chart and the food process flow chart inside the industry how means the when the food uh, fruits and vegetables it is going to supplied by the supplied and it has to be reached to the raw material receiving purpose and when they re receive the raw materials then it has to be go to the storage section after then they have to store at a particular warehouse they have to store they can uh, follow refrigeration condition for the storage purpose then the storage purpose then they have to be taken to the production area from the production area after the processing then it has to be getting into the final product then final product after manufacturing the product then it has to be stored in a storehouse then it has to be after storehouse it has to be dispatched to the retailers this is the some in this process the handling has to be taken properly from the suppliers to retailers then the handling process has to be taken uh, the handling measures has to be taken <coughs> and another one is third principle is hazard as a principle HACCP is nothing but hazard analysis and critical control point. It is planned to support good manufacturing practice and sanitization standards operating procedure by the FDA in 2001. And HACCP developed by the Pillsbury in the, in the year 1970. HACCP was based on, on the three principles. One is conducting a hazard analysis. Another one is determine a critical control point, establish monitoring procedures. By this, seven principles are developed. And in the HACCP development from this, I told you now, it is developed in 1970. But in previously, in 1923 onwards only, they have some laws are there. They collected some laws and they yearly, yearly, they included some laws. If in 1923, what pasteurized milk, how, how it, has, it has to be pasteurized and 1960 US Army collaboration and what the 1969 uh, how good manufacturing manufacturing procedure practice has to be done in this way yearly yearly it has to be developed and included inside the some laws are included inside and by this mostly it has to be yeah, seen the good manufacturing practice and sanitization of standard operating procedure it has to be there and uh, this involve the HACCP involved in the identification of hazards assessment of changes of occurrence of hazards if any hazards have happened and how it has to be controlled inside the chain food chain and raw material procurement manufacturing distribution usage of food product defining measures of hazards control and how and why this HACCP, uh, HACCP is implemented? Because it, it is looking for the preventing the approach of ensuring the food safety purpose. And it is by this HACCP, we can see the end product inspection and testing. And with this HACCP only, we can detect the hazard at any stage of, of the processing inside the industry. And by this HACCP itself, we can enable the producer 
processor distributor and exporter to utilize resources effectively in a cost effective manner and is also a, a, important for the consumer protection and international food trade by this hasap principle and it is it by this hasap we can assure that consistency in good quality products and i told you uh, it is having seven principles hasap having these are conducting the seven principles are conduct a hazard analysis determine a critical control point establishment of critical limits establishment system to monitor control of ccp and establishment procedure for verification to confirm that hasap system is working effectively or not and est establishment documentation concerning of all procedures records appropriate to principles and their application let us discuss one one principles in in first principle conduct a hazard analysis in this what we have been we, we have to do means associated with the food production in all stages from primary production or processing stage or manufacturing or distribution until a point of consumption means if any hazard is uh, uh, hazard is there means we have to identify the hazard and we have to take the step means uh, conduct a hazard analysis means we have we are are identifying next uh, determine the critical control point ccp it is the procedure or operational steps that is to be controlled to eliminate any hazard if any hazard is developed inside means we have to eliminate the hazard and minimize its minimize the risk minimize the risk livelihood of occurrence of or to reduce to be acceptable level it has to be the any hazard is developed means it has to be minimize the risk and to a particular point to reduce and it has to be acceptable level till that we have to minimize if you see the principle 3 establish a critical limit in this a critical limit has to be framed it is a maximum or minimum value and that hazard may be developed by the physical hazard or chemical hazard or biological hazard so what type of hazard we have to monitor and we have to identify and we have to monitor the hazard and that limit has to be framed and it has to be controlled at a ccp that 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 is called as a critical control limit and in this when we are uh, framing this ccp we have to soothe this, um, we have to see the prevent and eliminate or reduce a hazard at a acceptable level and in uh, in a sometimes we can see the some changing in the moisture level or sometimes ph also change or sometimes we, we can see the temperature control water activity or sometimes chlorine or sense any sensory parameters these visual are appearance are textures they can in these critical limits we have to frame and we have to see the critical limits and and we have to reduce the hazard inside the process next principle for establishment monitoring procedures in this the series of observation or measurements needed to be taken to access whether ccp is there in a critical limits or not we have to check that critical critical limit critical control point is accessing or not we have to check and monitor should be ideally provided information in a time to make adjustment to ensure control of process to prevent violation of critical limits means when we are framing the critical limits we have to check, uh, check the monitor it is uh, 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 running smoothly or not we have to check that monitoring and indicate that trends towards loss of control of the ccp and about the principle 5 establish corrective actions the corrective actions and procedures has to be followed for this one and when we identify the hazard inside the production and afterwards we have to we have to frame a corrective actions to correct the hazards and we have to eliminate the cause causing purpose of hazards and bring critical control back to our control and this causing a problem must be identified in whether physical contamination occurred or by the micro microbial contamination 
or chemical contamination occur what we have to identify at that point then we have to select the establish a corrective action plan and when monitor procedures has to be taken and it has to be taken corrective action plans and then it has to be maintained documents and the, this document is called as a hazard record keeping next one is establish verification procedure principle 6 in this verification we have to check the verification and auditing methods procedures activity which is monitoring ccp critical control point and verify the hazard plans show the system is operating according to the plan or not when we we developed a plan and we took a correct action plan isn't it so it is monitoring or not verification we have to check that verification process and uh, in this review of hasap system and its record we have to check the verification process and review of deviation if any deviation occur and that deviation we have to check it and product disposition and confirmation of ccps are kept under the control and this is the last step in this step record keeping and documentation procedure has to be done and by this record keeping and documentation we can see the effective implementation of hasap and uh, we can document and record should be maintained with this we can do um, control the hazard analysis critical control point determination and critical limit and determination in record keeping we have to monitor ccp monitoring activities and deviation if any happen and we have to take it as to be normal condition associated with the corrective re reactions and modif modification of hasap uh, systems if any errors are happened anything in procedure then we have to monitor we have to maintain the record in future it has to be it should not be come that errors or any hazard is not developed in that way we have to keep a record in if in, in future also any record if a hazard may come means by this record we can maintain properly if by seeing this record we, sh we can prevent the future hazards inside the food processing areas and if you see this hazard analysis worksheet and uh, what ingredients used and what proce processing steps i have taken and uh, identify the what type of hazard is there whether it is coming from the biological hazard or chemical hazard or physical hazard we have to identify the hazard and then what steps we have taken for the controlling of the hazard we have to see that are any potential food safety hazards is, are there or not if it is there means yes if it is not there means no we have to put then justify about the decision if we, if it is there means how you have controlled the ccp how you have followed this you have to write that one justify then what preventive measures has to be taken that one also we have to write here and whether the ccp is making correct actions or not we have to write this one this is the hazard analysis work, worksheet performed inside the industry and the plan hazard analysis plan how it is means what critical control point we have developed and how much hazard is there inside it and that that with this your critical control point the hazard is removed or not we have to check it the preserve uh, preventive measures we have to follow and what critical control point you have chosen how how far is monitoring and frequently we have to check it that one monitoring steps has to be done and the corrective actions has to be taken and verification has to be done whether we are doing properly or not then record keeping and documentation has to be done this is the hazard hazard plan form and measuring the control measure to control the hazard how we are going to control means the when the raw materials when it we, it has to be coming to the industry we have to check that one raw material and process um, packaging material what we are using processing st steps in the plants and machineries storage distribution premises and personal hygiene we have to consider the that in which region the hazard is identified that one we have to check that one and we have to follow the treatments for the removing of hazard like heat treatment with a, at a particular time or we have to maintain that temperature also humidity also 
filtration if any physical hazards coming means we have to filter with the pores size filter in integrity we have to add sometimes the food items may cause uh, food poisoning that time we can use irradiations dosage we have to give radiation techniques and density of load how much density we are adding that one we have to check sometimes chemical treatment concentration of some chemicals or preservatives added or ph regulations has to be maintained temperature control has to be done and lessons learned from the food safety success and failure and the world health organization recognized hasap is a good principle to monitor it is going to monitor the food safety the world health, world health organization they decided and uh, science based knowledge has to be monitored to develop a business and the uh, limited technical resources are available and understanding a hazard and how they manufacture themselves valid validation of various effective measures are controlled taking place by this hazards uh, hazard principle and we can by the hazard principle we can protect brand protection inside the market by coming high upon the list not just because of the importance of senior manager or business owner but it is brand protection is essential for the continuous for the growth of business from product line and increasing confidence through the reduced reliance on in ingredients and in product quality control testings can be checked and real time monitoring then meet regulatory obligate um, obligation and can customers expectation we have to check if customers are reviews we have we have to collect from the customers with this has a principles and we have to if any complaints came from the customers we have to check the cu customer complaints and we have to uh, take me necessary measures to remove um, uh, their complaints and global food safety systems it has uh, followed in codex principles also this has a principle is following and use of resources also if any risk is happening then we can check the uh, help in the comp uh, company help a company to shift mentally and freeze once one size fit in appropriate what is risk is there and how we can reduce the risk by this has a principle a principle we can reduce the risk and let us discuss about the food standards and certification and uh, few uh, standards are there the the company they they are going to make some food industry their own standards according to the national standard they are going to frame their own standards it is called as a company standards if it is maintaining by the national wide then it is in our nation in our india we can following this fsa principles bis bureau of indian standards and igmar these are following indian in indian standards we can go for the when we are going to export the product then we have to go for the international standards our product has to be reached international level then we have to follow iso codex elementary commission cac and wto world trade organization principle standards we have to follow and these standards what it is going to do it is going to main aim of the standards is to con uh, control the system required to integrate quality into a every aspect of food production and service and it is also facilitate trade in between the nation and also inside the nation and in between the nation also it, it, it will facilitate it is facilitate to export and import purpose if you see the iso international organization for standardization it is a worldwide certification process and non governmental federation of international standard bodies iso members bodies the mission of iso is to to develop a, a standardization worldwide to facilitate international exchange of goods and services and to develop cooperation in the sphere of intellectual scientific and technological as well as economic activity and by this iso we can iso 9000 we can see the quality requirements and quality management of an organization and adaptation of this standard is voluntary
In ISO, we can see ISO 9000, ISO 9001, and ISO 22000, we can see. If you see ISO 9000, it is a, mostly it is going to concentrate on quality management purpose only. And this quality management, it will guidance to tool which is needed, needed for the products and service meet external requirement to drive consistent quality improving. It will, it is going to check the process of quality. That industry quality is there or not, it is going to see. In ISO 9001, it is the standards are certified in a spe specific requirement and it is going to meet certification process. It is going to, the standards are going to help you in that all quality systems can be applied wide range in the organization in both large way and smaller, small industry as well as in larger industry also. And it is by this 9001 successfully complete register audit to confirm the organization system meets to the requirement or not, we can check that one. In ISO 22000, it is a inter newly developed international standard for food safety management system, FSMS. And it is also recognized worldwide. And by this ISO 22000, it is key role is in the food safety standard by region, country, activity, organization, and food type. And it is going to establish F FSMS and implementation in the food plant, proper imp improvement and upgradation of food safety management system. It is going to check. And it is also intended to maintain the standards by providing assurance about quality, safety, and reliability of the product. And ISO aims to maintain the food safety. Another one is con consumer protection. It is ensure the consumer protection. And it is also going to affect, improve the cost effectivity to the food supply chain and ensure that codex principle has a principle. This follow the HACCP principle as well as codex principle also. And it is helpful for the internal audit, self certification and third party certification. And by this ISO 22000, we can see the traceability of product. If any product is unsafe for the, uh, if it is reached to the what market, it is unsafe, then we have to trace the product. By this traceability, we can detect the barcode system and we can see that this product is reached to the this region. We can check that one. And from that region, we have to, again that that food materials we have to collect back to the industry if it is unsafe for the consumption. So this process is called as the traceability, the ability to trace and follow a food, feed food um, production animals or substance intended to be extended, incorporated in a food feed through all stages of production, processing and distribution. Either, <laughs> either the traceability is maybe upward direction or it may be in down, downward di direction. By this ISO, we can uh, see that this newly traceability system also we can notice this one. Another one is Codex Elementary Commission. It is also one of the body or certification body for the food safety purpose. It will protect the health of the consumers and facilitates food and agriculture trade. In 2007, more than 187 countries were developed in this membership, codex membership. And it is, and our India is also one of the member in codex elementary commission. And uh, it is going to, through the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, it is, it is uh, under this member. And it is, what it is going to do means the codex elementary commission, the document and publish the CAC, codex elementary it means it will give the codes for the food items, collection of internationally adapted for the food standards. If you see the WTO, World Trade Organization, what it will, it is established in 1995. It is helping the trading the, trade the food smoothly. Um, the trade, trading has to be done smoothly from one country to another country and fairly and predictably, predictably by administering 
trade agreement if any one country may reject some uh, last time what uh, two years back when we found india china uh, what happened that trade came stopped or not then if the trade has has been stopped means the, the country has to be complained for the wto also so the wto al always it has to be see the whether the trade is exhibiting smoothly or not freely or not it has to be checked and this is the main motto of the wto and it is also assist the countries in a trade policy issues and if any issues happen between the any two countries and wto check the issues also and wto ag agreements covers uh, goods services and intellectual property rights also it will it is going to cover this one. and this in the wto there is a two types of control system is there one is food inspection another one is analytical capability in food inspect inspection from one country to another country when it is export and import happening it has to be checked produced and handled processed stored and distributed at that time the government appoint one authorities to check the food when, when it is coming from the abroad when import when we, when we are importing then the local bodies they are going to check that food process food items so appoint a food inspector to investigate a status of quality confirming confirmation of the standards in the laboratory they have to check the food inside the laboratory in analytical capability they have to carry the analysis of food with well trained person and have in the physical uh, they have to follow physical any hazards are there or not they have to check chemical hazards or micro microbial analysis inside the food and they after testing the food then the 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 food has some uh, item has to be accepted inside the country how we can see means government how it is uh, framing the for food safety purpose how government is doing the activities and industry people how it is doing activities means government is framing the food legislation and enforcement sir. and they are advising training and education to the food companies regularly and informing and gathering and food related health related issues also they are solving in this way industry also industry also maintaining good hygiene practice and quality assurance they are maintaining appropriate process and technology they are developing training to the managers and workers and staff also they are continuously they are doing and labeling also for the food products consumer education also doing for the if the by this consumer can able to by the labeling able to know the what item is there and what are the nutrients is there by the by the labeling process and the consumer also he can give complaints if it is not satisfied that one and academicians also they are going to play important role for the food safer food like doing uh, some research activities like science research and development the uh, academicians roles the like educating of the professional in higher level and entry to the industry as well as career development and ac academicians are they are finding their research finding they are going to publish in peer review journals and translating them into the information in local language or by the industry government and consumers and the whatever scientific uh, research is going that has to be delivered to the industry and government such that the formulas or anything else then it is has to be reached to the society that formula and academicians have a role in the providing neutral neutral discussion forum between the educator industry and the government they are playing important role this way. academicians and for the products certification we have in india agmar and uh, bis bureau of indian standards these are the days and in agmar is mostly we can see for the agriculture products and uh, bis is bis is nothing but bureau of indian standards it is dealing dealing with the goods including food products and voluntary certifications and it is, it is going to give isi mark for that one certification process and bureau of indian standards it is uh, established in the 2016 act and in this traceability 
tangible to benefit also provided and for the safe reliable quality goods minimizing health hazards to the consumers promoting export import substitutes control over the proliferation of varieties means it is going to focus on the standardization certification and testing process this is a bis bureau of indian standards and it is working under the ministry of consumer affairs food and public distribution government of india it has headquarter is located in new delhi and it is having five regional office located in kolkata chennai mumbai chandigarh and delhi most it is going to function in the most uh, function of bs bis means it is helping the minimizing the hazard level and reliable and quality goods promoting the safer for the consumption purpose and it is promote exports and import also and it is main aim is to product safety consumer protection food safety and environment protection building and construction this is going to help and it is going to give hallmark system isa i means uh, how we can say isa mark in this way this mark also it is going, it is going to hallmark giving in testing and services most of the food for um, food safety standards in the bis we can notice that some food items like infant formulas milk cereals wean, um, weaning foods processed cereal based weaning foods and follow up formulas packaged drinking water you can see isa mark and you can see milk powder skim milk powder condensed milk we can notice the these items under the certification of isa marks ag mark it you can see ag mark it is a for agriculture products this is a gradation certification process and it is developed in 1937 and the head office is located in hyderabad and more than 222 agriculture commodities are under this category few examples are fruits vegetables cereals pulse oil seeds vegetable oils ghee spices honey butter wheat atta besan flour these are under the agmar gradation and another one is agmar and by this agmar the farmers are mostly benefited because of the their products are with the agmar is there means uh, the products are sale inside the with high price they can sell the farmers are can if agmar gradation is there means uh, we can say for the high price then fssc it is another uh, food safety this uh, uh, this is established in 2006 and it is a headquarters located in delhi and it is also it um, five this this uh, following laws it is developed into the one law actually previously there is a different laws are the prevention of food adulterants act food product order meat food product order vegetable oil product order edible oil packaging order milk and milk product order these are orders are there and these all communities are bring in one umbrella by the fssa laws and the function of the fssa it is going to give standards and guidelines of the food safety and also it is going to grant licensing and cert certification for the food businesses food industry there it is going to give license and certification process and it is also give guidelines for the laboratories in food business and it is also suggest the government in framing a policies and it is also collect the data regarding contamination of food products identification and any emergency risk is there means it is give information and creating an information network across country about the food safety and it is also give promote general awareness about the food safety and food standards and by this fssa act 2016 uh, 2006 we can see the highlights of the act cover the license and reg uh, registration the packaging and licensing of the food businesses like food product standard and how um, food additives are used we can see that regulations food additive regulations and also from um, prohibit restrict the sales of approval of non specified food and food ingredients if it is having license um, certification then we can sell the inside the 
the food items can sell inside the market. And it also provide food safety and standard on organic food regulates food advertise, advertisement. This is about the FFSA. Thank you, Vananda. Any doubts, friends? So your session was wonderful and full of knowledge regarding all those things of food safety as you told and has a principles and all those SOPs and procedures for all those food safety and hygiene maintenance. So I guess students found this webinar very knowledgeable and very helpful in their career because uh, I guess in our syllabus too these are all the subjects there, food quality and safety management and all things are very important for their career. So, Thank you, sir, for your time and uh, all the best for your future, sir. Thank you, sir, okay. for your time. Thank you, thank you. Thank you.